All right then. First things first, let me just introduce people to these two add-ons that I'm going to be using from this point. It's again, it's completely optional for anybody else to use these. It's not necessary. We can still do what we need to do without paying for these add-ons. I just under a time restriction, I find them too good to kind of not use. And I'm pretty sure anybody who tries them out will probably agree on that. It, it just really streamlines everything in a nice way where we're not running through menus as much. So first of, of the two I will show you is um, this guy, if I can find the window. Here we go. So you go on Blender Market and look for UV Packmaster 3. This is a pretty expensive one. It's pricey enough. It's $44, but it's so useful when it comes to doing these UV layouts and stuff um, great for UDEMs too but it just takes all the effort out of using your UV layout it basically it uses a heuristic search where you could just let the let the algorithm calculate the best way to pack your UVs into a, into a, a section of your your editor and you don't have to do any brain work it, it, it does it all for you like look at the five stars on this it, it's it's incredible it really is I'm um, a quick, uh, if you just actually look at the video demo and I'm pretty sure you'll be sold on it. But um, yeah, we're going to be using this. This is brilliant for, um, let me actually just show you practically here. If I just grab, I'll take this object here. And I have it installed. I'll quickly go over how to install it and all that. But uh, before I do, let me just show you what it's actually good for. If I go into my UV editing window here. I have it already open, and I'll give myself a little bit more, more space to work here, and find my object again. Right, so there's my, say there's my selection, and you can see it here in this top window, uh, the top corner of, of this, this layout. But brilliant about this is, if you remember the way we were doing this, like we I'd, I'd go from the start i'll take this and i'll unwrap it it unwraps it but you can see because it's not a perfect square we're kind of stuck needing this gap to be filled and we had to come in here manually and then come through your menu turn off your constraint or in this case you turn on your constraint and then you have to grab your edge and move it out to make this a perfect square and then you have to come up to your bounding box and you have to find your snap and all that and then you gotta snap this and then it disappears so you have to unwrap it again and then do it all again and now you can resize it up to the window you want and it's just it's a pain in the you know what i mean like it's just not fun to do so with this uv pack master we have this little button here pack and that would just if I turn off my snap here, can't wait to not have to do this ever again. Uh, just move that inside. Pack does exactly what it says, it just throws it into the box. Now you'll see there that it packed up into this corner, and that's because the way this is set up by me, this won't happen outside the box, you kind of have to do this manually. Um, I'll undo that. I use what's called a target box here. Now when I have this um, texture atlas made, I know it's four parts, so I made a target box. Uh, the target box is basically just a yellow box, but you can resize it to what you want. You know, so I knew because I was working on, let's say, when I was making the walls, I was working on this brick texture. I made my target box just to cover that brick texture. So when I pack this, it packs it into the, the area of the UV map that I'm working on. So I don't need to come in and manually move this around and then have issues with it bring it in and then scale it up and i could do this kind of judging by eye and then have a look and i have to zoom right in and then i gotta grab this guy because I, I i missed a mark on him then i gotta resize him out here and he's too long here and i have to go check this corner and then line that up it's just it there's too much messing around so by just assigning that target box, I hit the pack and it does it all for me. And because this uses, again, coordinates, it's snapping on the grid, 
I know that it's perfect along those lines. And what's even better about it is, say I'm working on this, which is a brick texture. Let me take another few here and I'll just pack with it. Okay, so let's say I was working on these three pieces and I wanted them to be wood. Instead of having to come in and then bring this in and make sure it's lined up perfectly, all I need to do here is move the target box. So if I go to edit target box, click the down arrow, it moves it down on the grid and then it's packed there. Now, it packed, this is actually one drawback of it. If you have more than one polygon selected and you click pack, it'll try to pack them all in. In this case, what I want to do is just pack each one. So I'll have to go through, select one by one here, and pack. But again, it's still so much faster than what we were doing. And you can see here, it's a stress rate. Now, here is still an issue. You can see that we're offset. So this, is, this needs to be rotated. And we could do it that way. And you see here it lines up nicely again. But this is actually where the second add-on is going to work with this. And it's going to auto-rotate for us. So we don't ever have to manually move anything. We'll have one window here where we pack it. We'll have another window here where we rotate. And this is actually the window here I'm talking about. This is called, if I grab off-screen here, I'll bring this window in. Zen UV. I absolutely adore whoever made this because they're they're doing God's work. This one is $34. Or sorry, $24. Can't see properly here. But this again is just convenient tools in the user interface that you don't ever have to go into your editor window again. It's just so handy. So I think if you add the price of this and Packmaster up. You're looking at, what, $70? I know I'm not saying it's only $70. I know that it, money's money and not everybody is lucky enough to have a lot. And it's just a question of whether or not you're you're able to. For people who are, I would highly recommend it. For people who, who are not in a position to buy add-ons, don't worry. Everything that we've done will still work moving forward. This is just a quick crash course on how, how to set these in and, and use them to kind of benefit our workflow rather than kind of impede us any further. Because we, if you were to break this down into percentages, we probably spend about 60% of our time fixing UVs overall. This is automated. We, we don't have to worry about that anymore. And uh, I just want to explain as well, just because I'm kind of showing these add-ons, it's not going to be a tutorial on how to use these add-ons in depth. I'm just going to show you the buttons that you need. And that's really it. I, to be honest, a lot of it I didn't even explore myself, you know. But as far as Packmaster goes, the only buttons we're going to need is the pack button and our box coordinates. That's all. And we're going to be moving these around and just checking what's what. So with that, I'm going to quickly show you how Zen UV works. And actually, before I do that, I should just explain for people who aren't familiar with add-ons. Once you have these purchased and downloaded, to install them, it's just as simple as you go edit, preferences, add-ons. When you go to install, you just find the folder you downloaded to and inside these folders, you just click on the zip file. So in this case, it's you need to install the core library as well with Zen, but you just click on the version that you want and install add-on. I won't bother because it's already installed. But once you do, you'll get a checkbox. Just turn it on save your preferences and you're good to go. There's videos all over the internet as well about how to install add-ons in Blender, so I won't bother going into that. But once you then have Zen UV installed, what I like to do is, as you can see here, say you're in a brand new scene, your UV editing window. I always like to open Packmaster in the editor window, in the UV window, and then over in the actual model window, I will open Zen UV here. So the two of these complement each other like like you wouldn't believe. So like let's have a look at this. 
I have... I've changed these UVs around, but this one here is upside down. So, what he, the way it used to work was I'd have to come in and manually rotate this and snap it at increments and then hope it lined up as well as possible or it didn't shift. With this, all that we need to worry about is... Don't worry about all this stuff. I mean, in your own time, go through it. There's a lot of great stuff here. All that we care about is this transform section. So you can nearly just turn all these off. Because it is quite noisy. There's a lot of great features, so I'd recommend look look through it. Um, look through what it can actually do. All we need is transform. And these little buttons here. These are godsends. So basically, here my UV is upside down. I know it's upside down because if I was to come into... If I added my target box to be the roof tile and I pack that to the roof tile. In this I have to finish box editing and that'll disappear but now my box is set to here so when I click on the UV I want and pack it'll snap that for me. I know I can see that's upside down because my UV here is upside down. So instead of having to rotate this all I do is click on the rotate section here and rotate this twice. So we can now edit the UVs once we pack them, edit them using this window and say I wanted to switch this back to use the wood I go to the transform button here and now with these buttons I can just move that back it's it's really gonna speed up things and um, also settings to note if you're using this kind of UV atlas or texture atlas kind of the way I have it here you want to make sure that you have your settings so for a transform make sure you have it to 0.50 your move because this will affect the distance that they travel when you uh, click these arrows if you want to move it around so 0 0.50 works for transform and for rotate set it to 90 you could set it to um, 180 and just get a direct 180 turn every time but there will be times when you want to rotate at uh, 90 degrees at a time. So I always find it's best to set it to 90 and just give yourself two clicks rather than one. Just as a little more variety with air, especially with certain UVs you might want. You might want it set up that way. So that was just a very quick blast about how this works. Um, I'm going to go through it obviously as I'm packing my UVs from this point on. But uh Trust me, these two together are going to be so valuable. Again, and the YouTube is absolutely full of tutorials on how to use these in full. So feel free to check that out too. So then, with all that said, let's actually see how this new approach is going to work with these add-ons. And just how much faster it actually is to do, it, to do this kind of work now. So if I come into my modeling screen here, these are all done. I don't need to worry about them. I'm going to start with this. I'll start with this more basic one to start. Okay, so the last video, or maybe the one before, I can't remember exactly, but we made a cutter tool for cutting these roof segments. So I'm just gonna grab that and turn off. I actually made some more, which I will go through as well to benefit cutting walls and stuff. So we're gonna take this and I'll go into, actually, I'm just gonna take the two of these and I'm gonna go into top down view here. So in order to cut this, I'm pretty sure you haven't forgotten. I've drilled it in at this point. So we need to cut with the direction the roof is sloping. So I need to turn the cutter 90 degrees here. So I can see I'm running nice along the edge here. And that little edge, that's you probably expect this to run to that edge. It's not going to because that's the overhang of the roof. This is a... The gable end and that's kind of the eave of the roof it's kind of running over the house so with that setup i'll quickly just select the object control select the, no sorry apologies um the amount of times i've done this i'm kind of forgetting myself select the object go into edit mode select everything control select the cutter and go to mesh knife project turn on cut through and we're done now, a couple artifacts in the bottom we gotta get rid of, so I'm just gonna turn off the cutter. I will 
Press 2 to select my edge tool and select X, dissolve edges. And here, dissolve edges. Okay, so that's that will sometimes happen. You're kind of losing that edge. So if that does happen, a way to fix that would be to select this edge, right click, uh, subdivide it. That will add a vertice in the middle of it. And now we can do the same with this line here. Subdivide that. Now go into vertice mode, select one and weld that to the outside. I'll press Q, merge at last. And now if we select this edge, we can dissolve it. And there we go. So let's quickly just go into our UV editor and get this thing unwrapped. First of all, I need to give it our material. So I'll delete the default, add uh, episode one here. I'm going to turn on my wireframe just so we can see this a little better. Right, into UV editing. I've got my add-ons open here. And um, let me just close up all these extras. Transform will keep. Okay. So, let me zoom on this. I'll actually, oh no, there we go, I can see it. I was going to say I'll change the wireframe, but it's fine. Right, select this, take my polygon, and just unwrap these. Unwrap, no, what did I do there? Here we go. So one by one, I still have to unwrap it. Right. Now here's another function that we can use Zen UV. Because when we're cutting these, because they're not perfectly square, like I said, we're always going to get this little extra gap. And instead of me having to come in to my UV menu, turn on constraint. So I need to turn it on, then select my edge, and now I can move the edge and it won't go past that edge. That's fine. But then when I want to rotate this, I'd have to press A and press R and nothing will happen. So I'll have to go back into my menu, turn off constraint image balance, then I can rotate it. And then I'd need to constrain again. And it's, it's just too much back and forward. So what Zen is good for in this case is when I select this, unwrap it, it'll unwrap to the best. And then I want to fill that out. I'll come over here into my Zen tab turn on this section, transform, and I'll just click fill island. And that will fill the whole island out. Now in Packmaster, I'll edit my target box. I'll find out which one I want. I want the tile. I'm going to move my target box to the left, finish editing, and click pack. Sorry, select the first and click pack. And there we go. Now it's upside down as you can see. That doesn't matter, we'll just open up our rotate button here and rotate this twice. So, we'll just repeat that. Fill. Pack. That one's okay. That's rotated, so I'll turn him twice. Now these aren't full squares, so with this I'll need to I'll still pack and put it up in, in, in the proper square for me. Now I need to look at this and see um, it's on the wrong side, so I, I need I need this edge to be on this side. And this is actually an area where we still will unfortunately need to use our constraint to image bounds. So instead of having to go up into that menu from this point, what I'll do is I'll just go to UV and I'm going to right click it and add it to quick favorites. So now every time I need to just kind of shift these across, I'll just press Q and I can turn constraint on and off that way. So that just kind of makes it easier now if I need to turn constraint on or off, just to have it here on my quick, quick favorites menu. So with it turned on, let's press G and I'm going to move it to the far side and it'll snap where it should and I can see now that I have a seamless line running there. Now I'll quickly just do these. I'll pack. No. Pack. 
As good as it is, unfortunately, whenever I do this, I select that, unwrap, it won't select it in this window here. I need to kind of come over into my UV window and press A to actually select the polygon and then I can pack. And there we go, that's done. So now we'll quickly fly through this one too. I'll select it, pack, and fill. Sorry, I should have actually filled first. Getting used to this will take a bit of time as well, but once you do, you'll be flying. So fill, select, pack. And you just repeat that. I'll get all these done. I'm not gonna fill these islands because they're not full squares. I'm just gonna go straight in, select that and pack it. Okay, so some of these need to be rotated. I'll grab him, him, and him. I'll go to my rotate tab here and click this twice. And there we go. In comparison, it almost makes the way we were doing it look funny. If it wasn't so tragic, it would be funny, you know? And let's just quickly do this as well. I'll come through this. I'm actually going to fill all the islands I want to fill first, so I'm not going back and forth between menus. Now here I will pack. Okay, need to rotate him and him, so I'll go to rotate. Click that twice. Here we go. Now I'll pack these. Okay, so do you still need rotating? And do they need to be shifted? They do need to be shifted, so I'll, I'll select all of these. Come up here, press Q, make sure constraint is turned on, and press G and just move that. Here we go. And there we have it. Blender UV is made easy. I'm so happy this, this add-on exists, I really am. Let's just finish out the video here, I guess. I'll just get this done and in the next one I think what I'll be doing is I'll be making a wall cutter and we're gonna start cutting up the wall and getting that UV as well and as you can see with this these two add-ons set up yeah, well, it won't take long at all it's gonna be great so I'm just gonna fill these islands now I'll pack them Okay, so we find the upside down ones. Rotate down twice. Okay, so I need adjusting these. Oh, that's strange. The middle one's actually fine. Weird way that worked. All right, so here I'll grab these. And now because I'm not constraining this to an image bound I do need to have a judge on the eye here so I'll zoom right in so I can see I can see that crease of the tile there it's handy to have this tile on the map actually because it will it's good for doing this for, for lining things up a little better now I'll just divide that average here so there we go Perfect UVs, hassle free, great. Okay, so so I'm not cluttering you with unwrapping and edges and stuff. I'm gonna end the video here and I'm going to, I'm gonna UV out this, this other one. And then next video, I'm going to take these floor pieces and I'm actually gonna make a floor cutter. And then from that, we'll cut the floor up, get that UV quickly as well, and then we're on to the next, the next goal, which is getting our wall units textured and looking pretty as well. So I'll, uh, I'll catch you in the next.